welcome to Soulful Chakra. I am so happy that you are here with me. My name is Tash Mitch. I'm a Chakra Alchemist and today I'm going to be talking to Lara Waldman. Lara is a speaker, a healer, a freedom coach and the author of the upcoming book Abundance Activation, Financial Freedom for Light Leaders. Lara is passionate about helping conscious heart-centered business owners to stop holding themselves back from their life and their dreams. Now, this topic really, really, really interests me because we are going to be delving into money here and the sacredness of money, what it means to be manifesting money from a place of abundance and how we can earn money from a really joyful, playful part of our lives. So, Lara, welcome. It's fabulous to have you here. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's lovely to be here. <laughs> so, so tell us a bit more about um, about what drew you to start working in this way with the activation of you know money and activation of you know making money sacred for people and yourself. Well, uh, as most things in my life, it's come from me having to struggle with this area. <laughs> I seem to learn the hard way. Um, but yeah, I've been practicing as a healer and a freedom coach for 13 years and loved it and was fully connected to my purpose and had big visions for my life and what I was here to do. And yet things weren't really showing up for me uh, on the money side of things. But I didn't really care. It, wasn't, it didn't bother me until I ended up having two children and we couldn't really afford to get by and the basic stuff, which led me to start having real conversations with my guidance, my inner guidance, the universe about money. Mm. And what happened was I hit up against this conflict within myself about wanting to have an amazing lifestyle, like wanting to be able to go on holiday and travel and eat organic food and have space, like be by the sea. <laughs> And then these beliefs I was coming up against about it not being spiritual to even think about money or want money, mm. that somehow that was bad or not right. So I had to have a deep exploration about money and received some beautiful, beautiful information about what it truly is. Um, and actually, I, how I do my whole business is I get very strong guidance about what to do. I get very strong directions. And I was told not very long ago to start focusing on money, on light workers or light leaders, heart-centered business owners and their relationship with money because I realized we've just got so much of it wrong. You know, we've, mis we've misunderstood what this whole thing's about, which is keeping us stuck and keeping us limited and actually holding us back from doing what we've come here to do. Mm. That's such a big one, the holding us back from coming here, what we, you know, coming to do what we really want to do, what our heart's driving us forward to do. Because yeah. money can be a big part of that puzzle. Yeah, it's complete. I've discovered that it's completely interconnected. Yeah. And it was so weird because I thought, oh, uh, yeah, bad to talk about money, bad to want money or have money. I realized that somehow through this money manifestation, really showing up physically, also at the same time, we show up more powerfully in what we're here to do and our mission and show up more fully on the planet. Yes. That's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> it took me a bit by surprise when I first started learning this. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. It's, it's such a big one. And one of the things that we were talking before we actually started, is talking about before we started this um, conversation, was how much the desire body, which where the sacral is, you know, the desire body, the emotional body, um, the creative element of ourselves plays such a huge part in the midst of all of that. Um, because that's where the fun is, isn't it? That's where the playfulness with money is. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. They're drawing well for me experience is drawing things towards you and yes. And then and then letting that in, then being inspired to actually take that physical action which becomes more base, isn't it? Where we start actually things actually showing up in the physical. Yeah. But yeah, it's so much fun. It's one of my favorite things <laughs> to do. <laughs> Play with manifestation. Absolutely. The other thing actually that is really um, you know, really actually really interests me is the part where we always feel like we have to be doing quite a lot. Some people feel like they have to work really, really hard, and that's really in the psyche for a lot of people, that they have to work really hard to get money, that money can't come easily and gracefully and playfully and in a fun way, um, and in a way that's creative and artistic, you know? So tell us a bit more about what that would look like for us. 
Yeah, good, good question. Well, again, uh, I was very, very strong in my, what I call my masculine or the yang energy and very much went through life through doing, pushing, forcing, making happen, making stuff happen, which works to a degree, but there's a big cost attached to it, mm. which for me led to burnout and ill health. Um, and absolutely, there needs to be an element of us taking physical action and using that yang energy. But what the message that came to me time and time and time again was it's actually more about drawing things towards you and being a magnet and allowing to kind of receive it rather than having to go out and force it to make it happen. So for me, this is about the practice of getting into flow with your higher self, your soul, the universe, and letting that energy flow through through you and so it's actually there's a real passive element to it mm. which is you know for me it's all about undoing letting go and welcoming these beautiful gifts that the universe has for us and which is very much a being yes. energy yes. and um yeah and and then what we we're touching on you know before is that to really trust in being that things will show up for you just by sitting and being with yourself really starts hitting on then about how you feel about yourself, your self-worth, how you feel about who you are and the value that you bring to the world. So this is also a really powerful practice is learning how to really value and honor who you are and that you just being is all you have to do essentially yeah. with a bit of that guided action. That is such a big one. That is such a big one. There's this um, thing that's going around at the moment that everyone's trying to find their purpose and everyone's trying to find, you know, that, that, that thing, that one thing that is supposed to come through them and blast out into the world. Yeah. But to a large extent, what I have found is that it's a work in progress. Like, I've not really found that sort of it, the, the heavens have opened and angels have just gone, this is what you're supposed to be doing. I found that it's basically one step at a time and the more you develop yourself and the more you, you open yourself for information to come through, more information comes through and you find yourself um, expanding as you're going forward. So. And the other thing that I found is that you never have access to the final picture, really. The final picture is always in develop, you know, development mode, basically. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about really getting into flow, that's very much where that comes from, isn't it? Getting into that sort of sense of flow where you're actually listening to your own resonance. You're tapping into... Um, you know, what your own divinity, what your goddessness or God guy or whatever is saying to you. And you're actually leading from that place and into the world. Absolutely. And actually, what you've just said is what I think is our purpose, yes. to really like share who we are in the world. Yes. And that there might be certain vehicles where that best flows. Like for me, it was being a healer. Mm -hmm. But the essence of it is about bringing your gifts, who you are, which again is a being to the world. And then there might be all sorts of things you want to do with that energy. Like it could be just dancing or it could be cooking or it could be making love or it could be, you know, growing your business or it could be all sorts of things. But it's never, it's never just one thing. As you said, there's many ways that you can express yourself in the world. And so that's what I think our purpose is really, is about showing up fully in our lives and exploring life. Yeah. And that's the interesting part of the money, isn't it? Because one of the things that I've found is actually exactly what you're saying, showing up in your life, mm -hmm. um, exploring life in all the creative ways that you can without boundaries and barriers, yeah. um, you know, really kind of jumping in and getting your feet wet, so to speak. Sometimes you don't need money at all for that, but sometimes you do. And when we have a block or a barrier or boundary surrounding money, there's always that kind of like, impetus behind us that sort of says to us but we can't afford to do that but we can't do that but if, you know we haven't got what it takes to do do you, do you see yeah. what it, and that's what really makes me excited about your course oh that's cool yeah so it's sort of like about not buying into those perceived limitations anymore because they feel so real and they're maybe right now the money isn't there yeah. but the trick is not buying into that is your reality. Like you have the power to change it. Yes. So what we really want to do is be watching, yeah, those thoughts. Anywhere you, you go and buy into the limitation, mm. it's recognizing it's just you buying into something that's not real. So it does require 
you know, the sort of mental discipline and that you need to be mindful of what you're saying to yourself. But yeah, because my awareness is that our being is infinite, you know, mm. that there aren't really limits and barriers. There are perceived limits and barriers. But we want to kind of, do this work, it's like busting through those, sort of yeah. busting the walls of your person. <laughs> and, you know, coming, really exploding more powerfully into the world. So anytime we have that, uh, that constriction, yeah. That's for me where there's a lie showing up somewhere. Yes. Where there's a pers- it's like an illusion. Mm. You know? And so our job then is to how do we kind of bust through that illusion and find a new way of being. Yes, yes. I love that. The other thing is abundance. Now, abundance has got so many different kind of connotations to it. When you say abundance, people just imagine endless flow, which is what I imagine as well. Yeah. But um, people's experience experiences of it and my own experience of it it's almost something that I've got to coach into my psyche at times because we don't live in a world that actually really highlights and blasts out abundance and the abundance mindset yeah tell us a bit more about abundance and the abundance mindset yeah thank you I think it's such a great question because again we have this on this planet. We have so much of these perceived ideas of limitation and lack, and it's a limited thing. There's a limit to how much happiness you can have, and a limit to how much freedom, and you have to sacrifice and you have to compromise and all this stuff, right? <laughs> but we know because we're tapped into this awareness of on an energy level that on an energy level that just doesn't exist. There's there's flow and money is an energy as well that just wants to flow. Mm. So for me, when we're experiencing lack and limitation or lack of abundance, for me that's just a sign that there is some way we're putting a lid on what's possible. Somewhere we've bought into this limitation. And it's really hard for our minds to understand because we've been raised and trained in this programming of limitation and lack. But I believe that part of this work is about you know creating a new way of being. Like what would it look like if we're just in this constant flow? Like would we allow ourselves to have that much kind of happiness or joy or expansion or freedom? And I realize that when you've been stuck in a cage your whole life, stepping outside of that can feel quite uncomfortable. Yeah. So this feeling of abundance or freedom or expansion be, oh my God, it's almost <laughs> too much. So we go, go back to the thing. That's my comfort zone. Yeah. So what my awareness is on energy level is our, our true being, our true nature is abundance, is flow, is energy flowing, money flowing. Yes. And yet we're so trained in this old way, and I feel it's part of what our job is to do as light workers is finding a new way of being in the world. Yeah. The other thing, actually, when you were speaking that came across um, as something to talk about is settling you know when we settle for the second best because we don't think that we can have the best yes. so we kind of go the economy route because we don't think that premium <laughs> is something that we can have you know and and again this really plays into that abundance mindset because um people can sometimes get such a um, watered down version of what it was they were going for and sometimes tell themselves that they're happy with that because yeah. at least it's a version of what they were going for. Yeah. Um, but when you're living in the flow and living with abundance, um, that settling element doesn't happen in the same way, does it? Can we talk about that a bit? Yeah, well, <laughs> maybe we're very greedy people. But it's like asking for more, you know? And I guess one of the things I know we both can do is, is tap into this bigger picture beyond you know, this world, how we, how it seems. Yeah. And I get shown all the time what's possible, what's possible, what's possible, these big visions. Mm. So it's like, hey, let's play with that. Yes. You know, let's see if we can actually bring that big vision of what we know is possible in our heart and our soul and bring it here on the planet. That's sort of what, what I'm going for. Like, let's play with this. Yes. What, can, what magic can we create? Yeah. And it's just, I don't know, it's just fun, isn't it? It's yes. just joyful and playful. And I believe that's our true nature as well. Yeah. And it's that thing about having having a dream that t- intimidates you because you're like, oh my god, that's just like. But then on the other side of the coin, to br- instill the joy and the playfulness into it is something that is so necessary. And I feel it's something that the world needs for us to have big visions and really playfully, joyfully move towards it um, without 
because it's so many times I come across people who have actually had a glimpse of a vision of where their soul or their heart is leading them. Yeah. They get intimidated by the, the vision and then they clam up completely. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh my God, I mean, how am I supposed to do all of that? You know? Okay. So talk to us about how do, how do we joyfully and playfully move towards this thing? <laughs> <laughs> we have to dance the whole time. Yes, actually, I believe in that. I believe in dancing with life, definitely. Don't the normal way. Yeah. I'm just joking, but not really. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is also the challenge is because, you know, most people do know somewhere. We have our intuition that's yeah. guiding us all the time. Our soul is guiding us, speaking to us all the time. And as soon as the idea comes, that other voice comes in almost within the next second. And this is the challenge as well. It's, it's sort of like holding those dreams uh, in your heart and not letting them go, not buying into the limitation voice. So one of the things I, I teach people is those voices that come in that tell us, you know, oh, you can't do that. Who are you? You know, what was someone saying to you the other day? Yeah, who are you? Who do you think you are? That was one of them. <laughs> who do you think you are? Do you think you're something special? You know, those voices that come in, mm. the, the, the first and most powerful thing is not buying into them as real because they feel so real and that's where everyone just stops dead in their tracks. So what I'm all about is how do we really, one, listen to our intuition, hear our intuition and then follow our intuition. Mm which is literally like dancing your way into a new reality that is beyond what your mind can understand. So this is where, why I think people stay stuck and why that change is hard. It's, it's not actually hard, it's actually very straightforward, but that mind that comes in, mm. and then also tr we, the mind doesn't know how. Yes. So when we go into a how, I can't see how that's possible, so it's not possible, I might as well give up now. But I never know how, mm -hmm. I never, never, never know how. But the universe does, my higher self does, they have a 360 degree picture. My poor little brain, like, <laughs> not what it already knows. And same with, you know, all of our poor little brains. It's like it's like this old computer system that doesn't work that well. <laughs> and it's, it's like checking your eye, hard work, hard work, hard work. But then, um, but really, when we start tapping it, really, like, slowing down or clearing those negative voices and listening to our intuition, the answers come, don't they? They just pop in. Yes. Pop, pop. But we have to trust and listen to them, and that's the hard thing. It's like, oh my god, I must be crazy, you know. Or they, see, it seems sometimes like too, too, too wild or too crazy to be possible. But it's having that courage to follow your dream and follow your heart. Um, and 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 also, I'm a big, 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 big believer in getting support because mm -hmm. you know this is why we all get help and support and coaches. I do, you know, we all do. It's like you. you it's really hard to do this on your own sometimes. It's not impossible, mm. but you need someone there to go, you know what, you're not crazy. Like, this is possible, and, you know, there's a way. The thing, the thing with working on your own is that you're always going to come across your own boundaries, and you're always going to come across your own limitations, and, and you're always going to come across that thing that says, this is as far as I go. And sometimes if you have, if you're working with a visionary, whether it be in a pointed or focused direction, so, you know, like a money coach or whether it just be in, in um, an expansion way where you've got someone who actually can see past that wall, um, can see past where your vision is and go, hang on a second, if you look around the corner, look at that. And there's miles and miles and miles and miles ahead of you, you know. Um, sometimes you need somebody to point it out every now and again. And they're pointing out what's already in you. They're pointing out what's already there. Yeah. But when you have someone who's got that visionary skill and that, that skill of aligning you to that vision as well in a way that strengthens you and empowers you, um, that to me is quite a profound relationship. And it's one of the reasons I feel that, you know, coaches, etc., are becoming so paramount in the, you know, in, in the lives of so many different people when they're looking for expansion, basically. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because um, to a large extent, I, I feel that this journey, etc., is, is really about that. It's about um, finding... Finding where our boundaries are and moving past them. And it's kind of like one of the things that I feel like I'm doing every single day of my life, basically. Yeah. And also being as you know, being a coach as well is definitely one of those things. Is is um you coach others, but you're constantly coaching yourself as well. 
But I feel that that's what we're here. It, basically, if we were going to put sort of like our human existence into a nutshell, that feels what it is. It's about expansion, it feels like. Absolutely. And that's what's so fun. I, I'm all about the same thing, like stretching my comfort zone or stretching the boundaries. And the same with money. It's like, it's not even really about money. It's like yes. you welcoming more in is part of that thing of like, well, how much would I allow myself to receive? Yeah. Or where am I limiting myself? This is why I like playing with money because when you play with it, you're actually looking at where you limit yourself. Yeah. And then you go, oh, would I allow myself to receive more and expand out and expand out? And so it's a great tool, it's a great vehicle to yeah, know yourself more and, and come up against your, your obstacles and blocks and barriers. And that's, I do the same, like every day I'm constantly looking at where I'm limiting myself, holding myself back. Yeah. And then you can be like, okay, let's, let's <laughs> stretch that out a little bit. <laughs> so Laura, tell us about your course. Tell us what's going on um, with you. I know that you've got a webinar coming up. Next, is yeah. it next Thursday? This Thursday, this Thursday, yes, twenty eight. Yes, so I've got a, a live uh, free webinar, which will be about an hour and a half. Where we're going to be talking about why the universe wants you to be wealthy and five steps to abundance activation. So I share my very simple, easy to use five step process to manifesting, manifesting money in particular. And then I've been guided to create a course called the Abundance Activation Course, which is a twelve week course where I'm going to be teaching everything I know about money manifestation. But as well, what I was guided to, I could teach that in less than 12 weeks, but I was guided to create a hub, like a holding, a manifestation holding hub yeah. to support you to move through whatever comes up when you're expanding and stretching. So that's the emotions, thoughts, beliefs, for example. And to rise up, I believe that this is about us rising up into our power and arriving through that base chakra yeah. into more of who we are and showing up in the world and creating what you're here to create, like physically <laughs> manifesting it here. Yeah. And so that's what I'm really excited about, about helping light workers to really show up here more fully, but through this money manifestation vehicle, because also it's like, I want you to have an amazing life. You don't need to struggle. We don't need to struggle anymore. And part of welcoming money in is about, you know, honoring and valuing yourself and enjoying life. Like, I think life is to be enjoyed. I think this old paradigm of pain and struggle, we can move beyond. That's at least what I'm being told. So, yeah, so it's lots of things, money manifestation, but, you know, going much, much deeper as well. Oh, fantastic, Laura. I'm so excited about all of that, and I'm so excited that you're doing this work as well. Thank you so much for being a part of Soulful Chakra and for lending your wisdom and gorgeousness to this project. Oh, thank you so much. It's a great pleasure to meet you. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>